Hello to the world and to the kingdom citizens. I greet you in the precious holy name of Yeshua Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who said in his word, John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This clip is simply about America is a racist nation, period. Let us watch this clip as we move forward. Let me show you some headlines. The U.S. has asked India to engage minorities on CAA and FCRA. The U.S. is introducing a bill to probe whether Myanmar's attacks on Rohingyas constitute genocide. The U.S. says Pakistan's attacks on minorities are hampering religious freedom. The U.S. criticizes Turkey for restricting the rights of minority groups. The U.S. calls out Beijing for suppressing Christians, Uyghur Muslims, and Tibetan Buddhists. The U.S. tags Russia as a country of particular concern. There are also Vietnam, Eritrea, Iran, Nigeria, North Korea, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan, all countries of particular concern. And this happens every year. A quasi-judicial body called the USCIRF, or the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, publishes an unwarranted report, binds it with a claim of independently assessing and unflinchingly confronting threats to fundamental rights. It lampoons countries, schools them on equality, and speaks not a word on fundamental rights in America. What about the plight of minorities in the U.S.? What about the rampant racism? Again, a stoic silence which only goes on to indicate two possibilities. Number one, America thinks it is above all. Number two, the American truth is too bitter to confront. The crisis runs too deep for those sitting in America to dig it up annually. U.S. President Joe Biden was recently asked his views on racism. He said, and I'm quoting, I do not think America is racist, but I think the overhang from all the Jim Crow and before that slavery have had a cost. His deputy said the same. America's first black vice president, Kamala Harris, said this. I don't think America is a racist country, but we also do have to speak the truth about the history of racism in our country and its existence today. Now, first of all, these statements contradict themselves. Why say something so assertively only to follow it up with a but? As for the truth, here it is. America has one of the worst records in the world on minorities. No matter what its leadership tells you, the country is systematically racist. And we will show you that on this episode of Gravitas Plus. Hello and welcome. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. And tonight I argue that racism in America is a reality. Let's begin with history. Between 1525 and 1866, 12 and a half million people were kidnapped from Africa. They were bundled up like cargo, and many of them were shipped to what we today know as the United States of America, where nearly 2 million Africans would die in transit. For the 10.7 million who survived this transatlantic slave trade, life would become a living hell. On reaching America, they were shackled, enslaved, forced to work in sugar fields. Men, women, and children fell to the ground and died on the plantation fields. Slaves were ripped, beaten, burnt, mutilated, raped. So does America have a racist history? Yes, it does. Fast forward a few years, a civil war and secession. U.S. President Abraham Lincoln freed all slaves. The date was the 1st of January, 1863. The decree read, all persons held as slaves are and henceforth shall be free. Two years later, on June 19, 1865, Union General Gordon Granger told the slaves of Galveston, Texas, that they were officially free. The day is now known as Juneteenth. The National Museum of African American History and Culture calls it America's Second Independence Day. The United States celebrates Juneteenth every year. But what exactly do they celebrate? There is racism in policing. Black people make up 13% of America's population, but they account for 28% of those killed by police in 2020. There is racism in the criminal justice system. One in every 10 black men in his 30s is in jail on any given day. Youth of color make two-thirds of the youth detained. There's still housing discrimination. There is still banking discrimination. Blacks and Hispanics face extra challenges in getting home loans. In 2015, 27.4% of black applicants and 19.2% of Hispanic applicants were denied mortgages. There is still educational discrimination. Nearly 72.4% of black students attend a high poverty school. In comparison, it's 31.3% for whites. Then there's workplace discrimination. 
a black graduate is more likely to be unemployed. But there are certain jobs where people of color are overrepresented. The lowest paying ones, like food servers, porters, barbers, tailors, dry cleaning workers, concierges, chauffeurs, agricultural workers. In 2018, an average black worker earned just 62% of an average white worker. There is also wealth inequality. African Americans own just one-tenth the wealth of white Americans. There is health disparity. In 2017, 10.6% of African Americans were uninsured. Why do 11 in every 1,000 babies born to black Americans die when the national average is 5.8? And then there are hate crimes. Anti-black bias was behind 27% of the hate crimes in 2019. Some of these crimes are committed by white men in uniform. Let's look at some recent incidents. You're all familiar with these words, the last words of George Floyd. He choked to death after a white police officer knelt on his neck. What was Floyd's fault? He was suspected to have used a counterfeit $20 bill, $20. In March this year, 42-year-old Andrew Brown was shot during an attempted arrest. What was his fault? No one knows. In 2020, 41-year-old Daniel Prude died in New York. He was specially abled. He had no arms on him. But the cops detained him with spit hood. He died of asphyxia because of physical restraint. What was his fault? He was running naked through the streets in a light snow. In 2014, 18-year-old Michael Brown was shot by a white police officer. Twelve bullets were fired. Brown lay dead on the streets of St. Louis for four hours. No one knows what happened. The cop was never charged. Brown's death gave birth to the Black Lives Matter movement. As we speak, police in the U.S. is three times more likely to fatally shoot a black man. If this is not racism, what is? America has failed to practice equality at home but it is preaching to the world. Now we come to the question, why is America so racist? Number one, it has legacy. And number two, the legacy has now become political. There are two major parties of America, the Democrats and the Republicans. African Americans mostly vote for the Democrats, the whites for the Republicans. Barack Obama was the first black man in the White House. His election was seen by many as a national atonement for the sin of slavery. But race also became one of Obama's biggest failures. Under his administration, the percentage of Americans who believed racism was on the rise doubled. Incidents of racism rose too. It was under the Trump administration, not the Obama administration, that lynching was finally declared a federal crime. But that doesn't clear Trump of anything. He played the white supremacy card, whipped up nationalism, made proud boys prouder, and sent troops to fight the Black Lives Matter movement. Joe Biden promised to heal the nation, but few months in office, and he says America is not even racist. Can you solve a problem without acknowledging it? I started by showing you some headlines. I'll end by showing you some more. Cases of mental health are rising in the U.S. because of racism against Asian Americans. Minority children in America are lagging behind even in full-time classroom learning. The pandemic has affected more black Americans compared to their white counterparts. Domestic extremism has become mainstream and could threaten American life for 20 years. Half of all U.S. minority-owned small businesses could not afford rent in April. The United States of America is among the 10 worst countries for racial equality. And yet the U.S. thinks... It has the moral high ground to school others on minority affairs. It has none. And with that, I rest my case.